So now we're ready to move on to the next stage, which is our instancing. So before we do that, and it's another good habit to get into, is let's tidy this up. So these guys are good, but pretty much everything else we're doing in there, apart from that errant point scope, which I will delete for now, is just to get our weighting right, just scattering where we want and not where we don't want. I can at this point too turn back my water, turn that back on and see where we're, where we're at. Which is cool. Okay, so we need to tidy that up a little bit. So these guys, we need to scatter to stay out, but everything here, everything here, we'll put into its own group and we'll just call it, well, in its own compound, waiting. So we've got a couple of things coming out. One is our dot product to show the, to be able to show our diagnostic material on our mesh, which we don't want anymore. So we can get rid of that, that's fine. Also means we can get rid of this. And in, so in here, we just rename this to weights and we're ready to go. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get in our trees. So I'm going to pause the video while I go and find them. What we're going to do now is start our instancing. So we've got our points. We're happy with our points. Uh, there's probably a little too many there, but we'll get back to that later. What you should do is go and import this file. So if we go file import and go to the right place. Week two tree meshes. So this will be this will be uh, included. So we'll input that, and we've got all three of our trees. Now, when you import something into Maya, you've got to deal with some things like namespaces. So you know, namespace editor. Week two tree meshes. Right. That's the name of the file that we imported these from. You can tell there's a colon there. I don't want the namespace, so I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to say merge with root. So now they're just called trunk one and crown one. So let's just show those and nothing else. So there's my first tree, trunk two and crown two. Just show those. There's my second tree. And then trunk three and crown tree, trunk three and crown three. And that's my third tree. Okay. That's what I need. They all look very big. Let's put them in a group, keep things tidy. So we'll group them in Maya. We'll call them tree instance meshes. Perfect. Make sure we're showing everything, but I'm going to hide this group. Okay, so let's get these in. Bring in the crowns, and we're just going to select them one, two, three, rather than three, two, one, like I did before. And this will bring in an array. So this is all three of our crowns, and we're going to use these to instance. So let's get that set up real fast. So I'm going to need to create some instances. And just to do this, Absolutely cold. Let's have put that. We got an awful lot of trees. So our first problem is that these guys are way too big. Way, way, way too big. It's doing it. It's instanced them. It's there's there's thousands of them. We can tell you how many there are. Essentially by going here. There's 42,000 of them. Alright, so that's Good for a forest, but these trees are way too big for, for our terrain. So the first thing we're going to need to do is scale them down. Now, we can do a randomized scale, but I think what, what would be better to do is to, is to scale these all together. Normally, what I would do is a transform points because we're not scaling the points. We're scaling the, we want to scale the objects. But to do that, we can do it on the points by literally setting a point size because our instances are going to know what that is straight away. So if I just go set geo property, I'm going to set the point size on this property. Yeah. And right now I'm just going to make a value node so I can get this set up properly. And let's just set that to 0 0.1, 1 tenth. Pop that into our data and then pop that into our instances. And immediately you can see this scaled, scaled everything right down. There's a lot more like what we wanted. So there's a couple other things we need to sort out too. The more observant of you would have picked what they are. One is that basically they're still a bit big. So we'll just cut that in half. Now we're getting more like tree coverage, a little bit more like tree coverage. But you can see that they're all following the normals which trees kind of do, but don't tend to do. And for a stylized forest, probably not what we want to do. 
We've also got some, for some weird reason, that are actually being instanced inside the lake. So we should probably check that out too. Troubleshooting. Don't forget too that these are just the crowns of the trees. We don't have any trunks in yet. So now what a good idea would be is to get the trunks in as well. Now we can do that by adding the trunks to the instance or we can just use the same ID to bring in the trunks as a separate instance. So let's bring in the trunks and I'll show you how that works. So we need to select them in the same order. One, two, three, bring them in. And now we've got two input by paths. We should probably name these crowns, not crows, and trunks. So what I'm going to do now is make a little something called a selector instance. And what this does, let's check this out. Selects one of several geometries or instance shapes to instan instantiate based on a per point property or an array of IDs. It can be connected to a set instance geometry or set instance shape node. Then we plug our selector instance into a set instance geometry and this is making another instancer. So it wants some points, we're going to use the same ones. The selector instance, because it's in the, the trunks are in the same order as the crowns, we're able to use a property that's on here. It's called point instance ID to tell this instance geometry which IDs to use for which one. So basically which trunks to use for which crown. So we're going to set that up now. So from here, we're going to go get geo property. It's a array of longs and the property is point instance ID. That goes into the selection, the instance ID values of set instance geometry. And this is saying when you've got instance zero, use instance zero of the selector instance, instance one, instance one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at that. So what we've essentially done is made another instance, but using the data from the first one to drive the second. Let's plug that into a diagnostic. And you can tell we've got that right because we have different colored trunks and also these guys have a split in the trunk. So this is just a really quick way of having one instance, one instance that control everything in a situation like this. And now, of course, anything I do here, so if I set my point size, I might need that to be even a little bit smaller. The trunks will scale with the crowns. So the one instance I will control everything. So we're doing pretty well. Let's just get ourselves a bit of separation so we can do some more layout and things. Everything after the create instances, we're just going to leave alone. That's our results. We've just put in the selector instance and the set instance geometry so that our trunks automatically follow what we, whatever we do to our leaves. And we're able to just use our leaves to drive everything, which is why this pass node is here. So any, any changes we want to do, we can put inside here. So we've got a base point size. Let's get some size variation. Randomize point scale, just like we did before. Hook that up in there. Points and out points, and things change. Okay, so remember we're setting a point size to start with, and then we're going to randomize it. Turn that off. Things change a lot. We want to use this that we've already set as our base for this guy. So we scale existing values that's on. So what this is doing at the moment is scaling from 0.5 of this number to two times this number. So essentially 0 0.0175 all the way to 0 0.07. I'm going to bring this down to maybe 1.5 and I'm going to bring this up a little bit to say 0 0.8. So you've got different heights of trees, but they're not that radically different. Okay, let's fix the fact that half of our trees are leaning based on where they are in the terrain. And they're doing that because they're picking up their normals from the terrain. So the easiest way to fix that is to set a new point normal, which is always pointing up. The easiest way to do that is a, well, first we need a set point normal. Set point normal, pop that in there. And 
we need to create an array of values to plug in here. And it needs to be the same number of values as there are points, or in this case, normals. So the easiest, easiest way to do that is if we get the point count, tells us how many points they are. And we're gonna make a new array just by using a resize array. We're gonna use a resize array without any array going into it. So this will create a new array for us. And we need it to be a float three array, and we need it to be zero, one, zero. So we're changing our normals here from whatever they've picked up from the surface to straight up. And if I plug this in, nothing happens. The reason nothing happens is because this is where we set our orientation. So we can turn that off and get what we want. Or we can leave that on and move all of these to happen before we scatter. Either way works. Still good to know how to do this. Let me show you. So we'll plug this guy into here. My mistake here was thinking I needed to change the normal, but at this stage, it's the orientation of the points that matters, not the normal of the points. I'm gonna pop in a pass node here and hook that up to those and that and that. And then if I take this guy out, does the same thing. That's one more problem solved. Don't forget to, you can just fix this by doing that. Next one is we have some trees in our lake and we already know how to control the trees in the lake, the weighting that we set up before. And it's this number. Probably what we, the easiest way here is just to start adding an offset to this number by making a new value node. It's gonna say minus 0 0.1, should have been 0 0.1. It's too much. With this number, we can control pretty much how far back from the lakes we're going to, because this is a height control. Let me just show you if I slowly bring that down. You can see more trees are being added. I take it up, trees are going away. I'm pretty happy with 0 0.025. This is pretty much giving me what I like. And don't forget too that we have, we have one value so the trees aren't too high. We have one value so the trees aren't too low, and we have one value to make sure the trees aren't growing on anything too steep. Looking pretty good so far. We've got ourselves a nice little forest. We've got some nice gaps around our lakes, a nice clearing here. We're not, we're not scattering on anything too steep or too high or too low. So we've essentially at this point made a fairly good forest. This is a fairly robust and simple terrain scatter to get into.